Hello and welcome back to this week's mini lecture video series. This week we're going to be looking at chapter three, the accounting information system. This video will focus on the first two learning objectives, analyzing the effect of transactions and explaining how debits and credits are used to record transactions. So effectively, what we're going to be doing here is figuring out how to capture uh, the language of business from the story of a business and journalize it into information. Uh, in a way, it's sort of like coding or any other sort of transcription. The accounting information system is how we transact with data. We can, oh my goodness, use this to apply to a number of different uh, scenarios and situations. So this might be anything from PepsiCo or Irving Oil or any other business that you can think of. And you can also use these types of journalizations uh, for your own life. And I will tell you, um, you know, when I'm like, oh, my debit balance of cash has increased, that means I have more cash. And yes, um, you, you know you're an accountant when you start making sort of half not funny jokes uh, to everybody else that you think are funny. Okay, but really, honestly, uh, one time uh, when I was an auditor in Calgary, we were auditing a series of businesses. And then um, it was, they were, they all seemed relatively unrelated. Uh, so there was something in the hospitality business, there was one in the agricultural business, and yet this was all the same client. And I was very confused because what is the common link between, uh, oh, and an entertainment company, an entertainment company, uh, a hospitality um, company, and uh, uh, agriculture? Well, it turns out to be a billionaire. So I was auditing a billionaire. I was literally auditing somebody's, you know, or a large portion of their, um, their cash balance, their asset balance, like all these companies rolled up to these billionaires, because it was a couple, um, personal bank um, financial statements. So we actually had one um, balance sheet for one spouse, one balance sheet for another spouse, um, and different transactions. Uh, so really, you can uh, you can journalize basically almost anything, uh, and we, we do in accounting. Uh, of course, what we journalize will depend on the type of business, the size of the company or organization, um, and the information that is needed, as well as what data is available, the data and amount. We do have a very logical, um, and I say logical, it will intuitively become more logical with practice. Nobody is born an accountant. Nobody is like born being like, oof, that's a debit or oof, spicy credit. No, this needs to be learned. And so we're getting familiar with the language. There are steps. I recommend writing these steps um, in your study notes. So capturing them in your study notes, summarizing them and referring back to them. Eventually these will become second nature. But at the beginning, you can absolutely think, okay, what do I need to do first? I need to you know, analyze, is this a transaction? And then if it is, okay, I need to journalize it. I need to record the journal entry. I need to record my debits and credits. And then cool, now that I've done um, doing all of my debits and credits, I move on to step three, where I'm going to um, record I'm going to transfer those entries that I made to the appropriate general ledger. And then from there, I'm going to prepare my trial balance. And from my trial balance, I can create my financial statements, which we already did in chapters one and two. Okay, so now we're getting the granular building blocks to be able to create financial statements. Let's look at step one, the accounting transactions. So we journalize something when it is an economic event because we are capturing the economic reality of the organization. So when there's an economic event, we must uh, record it uh, in the financial statements. Okay, but not all events are recorded. We only record events that affect or change assets, liabilities, or shareholders' equity accounts. So there might be events that happen within an organization, but that are not economic events um, that are impacting the financial statements. All right, so here's an example. <laughs> um, I, goodness, uh, there, 
This is going to be silly. So I, Samantha Taylor, I, I work at Dalhousie University. I walk into the university and I stub my toe or I fall. Let's make this even better. I fall, I trip. Maybe I fall down the stairs. Maybe I fall up the stairs so it's less tragic. I fall up the stairs. That is an event. That is a horrible event. Maybe it's my first day back uh, to school and a bunch of students and faculty and staff see me. That is an event. Is it an economic event that needs to be journalized? No. Could it be? Well, perhaps. Uh, say if um, in a similar event that, and this has happened in a large uh, big box store, somebody walks in, they slip on a puddle of water that somebody should have been cleaning up, or maybe it was somebody mopping the floor, but they didn't put up the wet, um, the wet floor sign. They fall, they smash their head, they have to be taken to the hospital. Uh, so a trip and fall on its own is not an economic event, but if somebody you know, is negligent, if an organization is negligent and somebody gets harmed, that could turn into a legal event and then we would have to journalize the economic um, fallout of that slip and fall if it turns into like a suing situation. Okay. So there's going to be lots of kind of gray area that we're going to work through with a series of examples. But first, I want to talk a bit more about the transaction identification process and break it down for what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be looking at event criterion and whether or not we record or don't record it. So if a company were to purchase a computer, does this impact the financial position? either the assets, the liabilities, or the shareholders' equity of the company. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> the assets of the company increased. Great. All right, we're going to need to increase the assets balance of our financial statements. And so we can see down here, yeah, then we actually debit equipment and credit cash because we are decreasing the amount of cash. This will make sense on why why we debit and credit, but again, it's gonna take some practice. So let's just continue with looking at the identification. Is there actually something, is there an economic event that we need to record? All right, so the next one. Uh, I'm discussing a product design with a potential customer. Well, a discussion isn't an economic event. A discussion could lead to an economic event, but on its own, um, you know, <laughs> nobody is right now depositing uh, money in my company or my personal bank account for having a discussion. Therefore, in this doesn't change the financial uh, position of the company and we don't record. But yet, it's an event that did happen. Okay. Paying rent. This absolutely changes our assets. Um, we have less cash and we no longer owe rent for the month. So uh, yes, we record it and we're gonna decrease uh, cash, and we are going to um, decrease our shareholders' equity because shareholders' equity, as you recall, is the where we put our net income for um, all previous years. It's in the retained earnings of the company. Okay, and if that seems a little fuzzy for you, um, please go back and watch uh, chapter one's videos where we figure out how to turn in a trial balance into financial statements. All right, so as discussed, looking at step one of the accounting cycle is going to be where we are analyzing transactions. Friendly reminder. Assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. That is our, oh, that is our guru. That is our, um, everything needs to balance. So on that last example, um, we, for the last transaction, we kind of shortcutted and said, okay, decrease assets because we paid cash for rent. And um, we are going to also decrease shareholders equity because rent expense um, increased. So expenses decrease, more expenses decrease net income. The smaller the net income, the smaller the retained earnings, which rolls up to shareholders equity. This accounting equation must always balance. So we have a double-sided um, rule. And so whatever we debit must also credit. And by doing so, when we add up all of our debits and credits, they'll equal, they'll have our accounting um, formula here, remain in balance. 
So remember how I said when you have an expense, then that will affect retained earnings, which rolls up to shareholders' equity. Here's just a nice illustration of that. So remember when we articulate through the financial statements, first we look at our, um, our income statement, our statement of income. Then we look at our, um, our equity, our changes in, uh, in our statement of changes in equity. And then uh, we look at our balance sheet. And so this kind of summarizes that process. All right, time for a question. I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of economic events, and I want you to tell me if it's something that's recorded in the accounting system or not recorded in an accounting system. All right, the first one is you pay rent. Absolutely, recorded in the accounting system. All right, you purchase or paid for equipment. Ah, yes, smart. Uh, that is um, recorded in the accounting system. Hail damaged your equipment. Yep, probably gonna have to replace that equipment. It's an economic event. Cash is going out for all of these. Paying rent, buying equipment, and repairing your equipment. All right, conversely, let's look at a few examples that do not um, results in record, recording something in your financial statements. If you think about paying rent, that wouldn't be recorded. If you considered purchasing equipment, not, not recorded. Even if you had a discussion about purchasing equipment, nope. The weather report threatens hail and you have glass inventory outside uncovered. Nope, again, the economic event did not or has not happened. It's likely gonna, uh, but it hasn't yet. So the moment the economic event happens, that is when we record something in the accounting system. And people, if this sounds confusing, it is, um, but working through examples can definitely help. And I will also say that um, as we work through financial uh, introductory, uh, financial accounting one, looking at uh, financial accounting, we're looking really broadly. And this is actually something that will be difficult in later courses of accounting when we go deep, because, you know, identifying is that an economic event? Those questions can be uh, increasingly difficult. So if you're struggling with this, that's okay. Uh, these are not intuitive, but with practice, they definitely do get easier. So with that, let's look at some practice. Um, I want you to take a moment and read these tr transactions or non-transactions, and then I want you to tell me, okay, would these result in an increase, a decrease, or have no effect on assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity? And then I want you to tell me, okay, are these accounting transactions that should be recorded uh, in the accounting records. So for those of you following along at home, you'll realize that we're gonna take kind of what we've been doing, which was first identifying whether or not they were an accounting transaction, and then you know, possibly looking at the impact of the financial statements. We're gonna look at it differently. So now I want you to think, would this increase, decrease um, assets, liabilities, or shareholders equity? And then I want you to look at the transaction and say, okay, should that be recorded on the accounting records or not? So take a moment, pause this video, and when you come back, we'll do a debrief. Talk soon. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look. Purchased equipment for cash. All right, so if we purchased equipment, this means, and yes, I realize I'm revisiting some examples from the past, learning, repeated exposure, same or similar materials, build the foundation, add on. All right, so this is going to increase our equipment, mm -hmm. and it's also going to decrease our cash. So equipment is an asset, cash cash is an asset. All right, so we're gonna increase and decrease um, our assets here. So overall, it has no effect to assets because they'll transfer, cancel, pardon me, each other out, but yet we still do need to um, reflect this here. Does it have any impact to liabilities? Nope, no effect. Does it have any impact to equity? No, no effect. 
All right, so do we need to record this in the financial statements, even though this nets out to zero? Well, yeah, our users, people reading our financial statements, really wanna know, cool, what happened? Oh, you have more equipment and less cash. That's pertinent information. That is an economic event. Yes, we are going to record this in our financial statements. All right, next one. Completed the purchase, um, the paper, completed the paperwork to hire a new employee. The employee will start work next week. All right, so employees are obviously an asset. So, uh, yes, employees are what we would refer to as an asset of our corporation. However, we cannot purchase employees. So, and the employee starts work next week. So while we completed paperwork, um, say if we were to replace this with equipment, um, if we completed paperwork but didn't actually get the equipment, that's some gray area. We probably wouldn't record it until we, um, and we're gonna look at this with um, the assets later, uh, but we wouldn't be recording it until the equipment arrived. And an employee, yes. When we work for somewhere, we are giving her all, we are adding value to the company. However, the company doesn't own us. They don't control us. We can leave at pretty much any time. So we do not have an economic event, although we have a wonderful event. We have somebody new joining the company. So this is gonna have no effect to the assets, no effect to the liabilities, and no effect to the equity. Uh, and we do not record this. Um, so we're not gonna be recording um, this in the financial statements. Although it is a wonderful event, it is not an economic event. Though I do recognize that uh, employees are what really fuel a company and will bring economic value in the future. We do not own them, we do not record them on the financial statements. All right, feel free if you wanna discuss any of these further, post discussions to the discussion board. If you have questions, it's not just you, um, and there's an ability to post anonymously. Although, really, it's nice to know who's posting. Um, I definitely want you to feel safe um, and not judged. Okay, fired the CEO. Well, if hiring doesn't increase or decrease assets, then firing shouldn't. So I'm gonna say no effect. And liabilities. Well, firing the CEO on its own is not gonna have an effect on the liabilities. However, I will share that an interesting question that came up in class was, well, wait, if you fire a CEO, you owe them severance. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the CEO is fired with cause and in their contract, if somebody deserves to be fired, you don't have to pay them out. Um, so it really just depends on what the contract would say if there was an economic event, but on its own, firing the CEO would not result in a liability, would not result in a change of equity, and on its own uh, would not be recorded in the financial statements. Now, it might be press released because it is an event, but it's not an economic event. Now, if there was something that said fired the CEO and paid them uh, severance, then that would be an economic event. But on its own, firing the CEO while an event for your company is not an economic event, and therefore we do not record it in the financial statements. All right. Performed services on account. So what this means is that we did something for another company, and it's on account, which means we haven't yet been paid for it. So if we do work but haven't yet been paid for it, the company gives us um, an IOU effectively. Um, we have an accounts receivable. So we are expecting to be paid for this work that we did. Uh, so we have an accounts receivable, which means that we actually have an increase to our assets as amounts that we are to receive from other companies or people uh, are an asset. Okay. And does this have an effect on a liability? Well, no. We did something um, and somebody else owes us money, so it's not a liability, but it is, um, it is gonna increase our equity, and that's because it's gonna be a revenue. So if I get a little sneaky here, we are gonna be debiting accounts receivable, because they're gonna give us money, and we're gonna credit revenue. And I know we haven't talked debits and credits yet, so just ignore me if you're like, nah, what are you doing? Um, but revenue is going to be increasing. 
because um, we did something for somebody else. We performed those services, so service revenue. So that revenue is going to increase our income statement and our income statement, um, pardon me, uh, our net income is going to be transferred after dividends to retain earnings, which rolls up to equity, which means this increases. And since we have an impact here, we have something that has been journalized. Um, we have an economic event, event, pardon me, and yes, we are absolutely going to record this on our financial statements. Okay. So moving along, we have a potential customer who's called us to inquire about the availability of a product with limited availability, and you are sure they will call back to place an order within a week. Well, surely they will call back. And when they do, and when they purchase something, then we can talk about economic events. But right now, we do not have an economic event. We can't increase our assets um, based off of a phone call. We owe nobody nothing based on a phone call. And we haven't earned or uh, incurred any expenses based on a phone call and a potential that somebody might call us back in a week. So we had an event, cool. We had a customer but we didn't have an economic event, which means that we don't have anything to record on our financial statements. All right, so how was that? Let me know uh, down below in the comments, let me know in the discussion board um, how you found this. I'm actually gonna break this up. Um, I have one more example related to um, learning objectives one and two, but I'm gonna put that in a separate video. So when you come back, know there will be one slide some Excel, and we're gonna be doing one comprehensive example for things that you've learned thus far in the chapter. I'll see you in the next video.